What's up folks? My name is Justin Springer and creator of the Best Shape Your Life Challenge. And this video is going to be a kind of a tutorial. In the past we've done uh, this presentation on location at the gym um, at a set date and time. And I wanted to make it a little more accessible to everybody since we got people all across the country doing it this time. So this will be about a 30 to 40 minute video. So prepare accordingly. If you need to break it up, that's fine. Or, or just get yourself ready for that. There's three things we're going to cover. First is a basic, uh, about a 20 slide uh, slideshow here for, for, through PowerPoint um, to explain in depth the challenge and what we mean by eat, sleep, think, move, and how you're going to approach it. We're then going to dig a little bit into the ebook um, that you should already have had. You can download it through thebestshapeofyourlifechallenge.com, um, and we'll help you get there after this if, if you don't quite have that yet. But I'll go through that, and then we're going to go into the website and kind of show you what it is you have paid for. So we have a proprietary tracking software and we have a way to measure and quantify your current level of health in comparison with the average American. I'll walk you through that and what that's going to look like. Okay, so let's get into this. The Best Shape Your Life Challenge quite simply is a six week online fitness challenge designed to help you improve the way you eat, sleep, think and move. Okay, very simply put, Sorry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, so this presentation, goals and purpose of the challenge, eating, sleeping, exercising, and we'll get into the tracking system. So here's the overarching goal. So I'm, I'm a CrossFit guy. I own a CrossFit gym. And when they, Greg Glassman first came out with this, this fitness continuum, he came out with this thing called Sick Well Fit, right? And they, he says they are all three metrics of the same thing, and that's our health. So what we then did is we just basically put percentages on that. And a good friend of mine from Cross, uh, uh, CrossFit 316 on Wichita, Jeff Pruitt, came up with some really cool numbers. We took uh, the NHANES study done by the National Institute of Health, which tracks thousands and thousands of Americans over several years, quantifies a lot of different health metrics, blood pressure, heart rate, uh, triglycerides, cholesterol, uh, uh, glucose levels, so on and so forth. So we took all that data put it into basically a, a, a program so that I can enter in my data and get a percentage ranking. So when you enter in your first baseline measurements, you're going to get uh, a number. You know, you're going to get anywhere from 0 to 100 percent. Okay, And then the goal is to just move that dial to the right a little bit when you're done after the end of the six weeks. So we want to obtain optimal health through the pursuit of fitness. It is our it is important that we pursue fitness and not just wellness. We, we, we kind of have this idea that wellness is normal. If you're supposed to have a 120 over 80 blood pressure, then we want to have better than that. Okay, so if we're operating in this area of fitness and something happens, uh, as it always does, life inevitably will kick you in the teeth, you must first go back to well before you end up at sick. So we want to be better than just average. We want to pursue fitness, and that's what this challenge is really all about. Moving that dial to the right and giving you the tools and processes you need to to get there. All right. And to do that, we need to kind of set our minds in this, this paradigm. So there's really four components or the fitness paradigm that we say for the challenge is we want to improve the way we eat, sleep, think, and move. Okay, and they are just as each one is just as vital as the other. Right, sleeping eight hours a day, exercising regularly, eating good clean foods, and then of course the think component. All right, and we'll delve into each one of those a little more specifically in the, as we go on here. Think sits at the top for a very specific reason. I can give you all the information you want about how to eat better, how to sleep better, how to exercise better, but it is all moot unless you make the commitment to come in and do the work. So helping change those negative limiting thoughts that you may have that keep you from accomplishing your fitness goals or your health goals or your weight loss goals is something we really need to dig into. So we don't just measure success by what you're gonna, how you're going to improve over six weeks, though it will probably be significant if you do the work. But it's where are you at a year from now, two years from now? Are we able to keep this program within your lifestyle over the course of your life? That's really how we measure success. Okay, and We need to prevent, uh, present tools for you in order to make that happen. All right. So this is a question I always throw out to people. And the reason being is I had a friend of mine and a person who used to train at my gym uh, joined another uh, weight loss program here in town, here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And they sent me what they were supposed to eat for breakfast that day and it was 
whole grain bagel with low fat cream cheese, orange juice, and a small apple. And that's what they were teaching her, coaching her to eat in order to lose weight. So I said, okay. And then I gave her another option, eggs with spinach, bacon, and some sliced avocado. A lot of people are oftentimes in awe of number two, being that that might be a decently healthy breakfast, and they think that number one is pretty much the status quo. Healthy grains, low fat, cream cheese, and then some fruit. So I want you to kind of just think about this question as we go through this, this presentation, and then you can kind of see what decisions you have at the end of this, okay? Or if, or if the, the, the answer you have now is the same as you guys will have in, in about 10 minutes here. So something to think about. So let's jump into eating. Uh, uh, the paleo diet's got a lot of uh, attention over the last several years, and for good reason. An easier way to just describe this is talk about a real food diet. Okay, that's our goal for the challenge. Lean meats, nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, and water. Drinking mostly water. Okay, and kind of the philosophy behind this is we evolved eating these types of foods, and genetically we are very identical to our hunter-gatherer ancestors. About 10,000 years ago, what we call the agriculture revolution took place, where we started changing from this hunter-gatherer lifestyle to planting fields of grain, uh, wheat, corn, so on and so forth. And our bodies really aren't designed to handle that stuff, is the argument for the paleo diet, or eating a real food diet. And I think that it makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's a million different diets out there, um, and you could try them all. This, to me, is not something that's a fad. This has been around for hundreds of thousands of years. This is just the way we used to eat. And I think it's very easy to keep on track with this long term. So yeah, for the challenge, the six weeks is going to be pretty tough, especially if you're not used to this. But once you kind of get the hang of it, you know, it's, it's not really that bad. You know, you can have a steak with some broccoli and a sweet potato. It's not a bad meal. You're not really starving yourself. You're not counting calories. You're just eating good, clean food. Okay, so that's the premise. The premise will be to eat real food, a.k.a. a paleo diet, for the six weeks. Here's the way this food pyramid looks. As you notice, there's no grains, there's no dairy, and there's no legumes. Legumes would be your beans and your peanuts, etc. So lean meats and seafood, nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, and ideally, all of this is sourced locally. The meat is grass-fed and it's all organic. Now it can be a little tougher, you know, in some of us in Kansas, Indiana, and so forth, getting uh, fresh organic produce in our area during the winter time, but you can still make better choices at the supermarket. Uh, but as far as grass-fed meat, usually you can find that stuff. Find a farm; it's not too far away. Maybe buy in bulk. But the benefits of grass-fed beef um, or, or naturally raised uh, food or meat is far superior to this grain-fed analogs that you'll find in the in the uh, in the supermarket. And we'll get into that as well. So what not to eat? So that may look pretty good to a lot of us, I know. Uh, grains, dairy, legumes, processed foods, refined sugars, refined vegetable oils. Okay, to make it very simple, if it's processed, we don't want to touch it. And the three main food groups that I think most people initially have trouble with are grains, dairy, and legumes. So all of our breads, all of our pastas, our dairy, obviously our cheese and our milk, and then legumes, beans, peanuts, etc. Everything else is pretty obvious. No donuts, you know like that. So I won't belabor these points too much, but the uh, I kind of like to tackle this notion a little bit. Uh, the low-fat diet has been pretty predominant over the last 50 years here in America since really about the early 1960s. The whole philosophy is there's more calories per gram of fat than there is proteins and carbohydrates. And so the conclusion was drawn that more calorie, we, the more calories we intake, the more weight we put on. I know there is some, certainly some truth to that. Uh, fats are not our enemy. They certainly alone do not make us fat. Normally, it's the refined, uh, a lot of intake of refined carbohydrates that do. So, fat is absolutely essential to the property functioning of the body. It provides the tide. It's a great source of energy. And it's essential to our cells and our hormones. Uh, good sources are nuts and seeds, and oils. Uh, great sources right there. And obviously, you're going to have uh, if you have good meats. Again, grass-fed beef has a lot of good fats in it as well. But fat so solely sources usually nuts and seeds and your oils. Okay, they are great for you. Um, if weight loss is a goal, is one of your number one goals for doing this challenge, we say no more than about an ounce to maybe two ounces at the most of nuts and seeds per day to help keep that weight loss active. Okay, um, so again, one to two ounces, no more than two ounces of nuts and seeds per day 
to help speed up that weight loss because it does add extra calories. Still good for you, but it'll, it will add that extra calories. All right. Proteins. Everybody pretty much should know proteins are good for you. Um, in order to get enough protein calories, we recommend eating some source of animal protein at every meal. All right. That's essential for building muscle, blood clotting, fluid balance, hormones, enzymes, etc. Our best source, sources are wild game or 100% grass-fed local lean meats and pastured chicken eggs. Okay. I always kind of make this caveat here. Complete proteins are only attainable through animal meats and products. They contain all nine essential amino acids. So if you're trying to eat maybe just a plant-based diet, you're not going to ever take in a complete protein. You can add some different vegetables together to create the amino acids, but it's just not the same for recovery, and your body really needs these kinds of uh, complete proteins and these essential amino acids to thrive. Okay, so um, go to your local gym. Hopefully your local gym or whoever's setting this up for you in your city has access or resources for you. If you're in Fort Wayne, we certainly have plenty of resources to in farms, local farms. You can get uh, beef, chicken, pork, um, even some good fish. Okay, so that's our proteins and carbohydrates. So it's all about insulin is really the que is, is what we're going to boil this down to. A um, couple different types of carbohydrates, the main types of carbohydrates, mono, di, and polysaccharides. And the reason I point this out is this saccar, this, this part of the word, just basically means sugar. So you have a single sugar, a double sugar, or multiple sugars. Okay, so glucose and fructose are single sugars. A disaccharide would be like table sugar, and a polysaccharide would be something like fiber or starch. Okay, low, slow carbohydrate diets are really the key. Good sources of carbs are pretty much any non starchy vegetable. Fruits are great, but again, they carry a high glucose. Um, uh, punch, you could say, some limit for weight loss. Okay, maybe one to three uh, pieces of fruit per day. Okay, and again, ideally organic and locally grown. And let's jump into a little bit about why insulin is such, something we need to focus on. So, to understand how insulin affects the body and why carbohydrate intake is more important than anything else, we have to first understand the glycemic index. So, the glycemic index measures the effects of carbohydrates on blood sugar levels. High glycemic index food rapidly raise the blood sugar, and low glycemic foods don't. So let's start with this. Low, vegetables, some fruit. Medium, rice, oats, and pineapple. High, white bread, sugar, potatoes, processed foods, etc. All right, so keep that in mind. And comes in this question of it's all about insulin. So let's, first, let's take one step back here. Let's say you take in something like white bread or let's just say some white sugar. That sugar gets rapidly broken down into your bloodstream. Blood sugar levels spike, therefore insulin levels will spike. Okay? So instead of seeing this sharp spike in insulin, what we want to see is a low, slow rise in insulin levels. And here's why. Insulin is absolutely critical in regulating blood sugar, body fat, and aging, and it plays a primary role in genetic expression. Okay, so it's a very important hormone. But just like anything else, we don't want too much of it. Okay. So kind of here, here, here's an example, maybe not example, of uh, um, how chronic overeating and, and chronic carbohydrate consumption can can have an effect. So carbs turn into break down into glucose, glucose into glycogen. Glycogen is the stored form of glucose in the body. So let's say you have your body is full. Your your glycogen levels are are full in all of your your entire body. So then what happens to excess glucose is it's converted to a fat called palmitic acid, which then can be ultimately uh, created into VLDLs, very low density lipoproteins. And this is really important because a lot of times there's, there's this big conversation about cholesterol and HDLs versus LDLs. HDLs they say are good cholesterol, LDLs are bad cholesterol. Well, it's not the full story, really. You have to look a little bit deeper. It's really these small, very low density lipoproteins, these VLDLs, that can get stuck within the epithelial linings of the blood vessels and help and, and can create uh, plaque buildup. So when people say the fat in, let's say, eggs and meat are what creates the cholesterol that creates plaque buildup in your arteries, it's an incomplete story. What a lot of it can actually be from is a chronic overconsumption of simple carbohydrates converted into palmitic acid, converted into VLDLs, which then create these very low density lipoproteins that then can get stuck within the blood cells, or blood vessels, excuse me. So, going further, palmitic effect, uh, acid affects leptin sensitivity in the brain. So we kind of get this feeling when we're, we, we feel hungry when we know we're full. We've all had that before. You're like, I just ate, but I feel hungry. 
right? And that can be because of uh, your leptin sensitivity is decreased because of this palmitic acid. So insulin sensitivity is then decreased in the liver, driving blood sugar higher. Muscle stores become full, driving more blood sugar higher. And the more blood sugar that enters into the bloodstream, the more insulin is released. <coughs> cell receptors or GLUT4 receptors that bring sugar into the blood into the cells are turned off. And so it's just kind of a vicious cycle and it just continues. Ultimately our fat cells can become insulin resistant. And once full body insulin resistance occurs, glucose is converted into fat and more VLDLs and they accumulate in the liver. Okay? Certain cells can then receive this low, perceive this low insulin as low blood sugar, despite the fact that we have tons of glucose and sugar in our body, and then cortisol is released. And this is like throwing gasoline on a fire. So then cortisol triggers the gluconeogenesis, the breaking down of tissue to create more glucose. And we know for a fact that chronically elevated insulin levels increase rates of cancer, accelerated aging, neurodegenerative diseases, obesity, and diabetes. So this is a kind of an extreme example of chronically overeating carbohydrates, but it's not too far off. And this is why in this challenge, what's going to be the hardest part is cutting out a lot of those carbohydrates that you're used to eating. And the first couple weeks are going to be a little tricky in that you're going to feel constantly hungry and potentially low energy if you're very used to having a higher carbohydrate diet. Okay, But this is what we want to be focusing on, and we really think this is the key to being healthy. Uh, some supplements, I'm not getting too much into these. Talk to your local gym owner or your local chiropractor, whoever you're working with on this, about this. I think fish oil is a great thing to look into. Many different brands, lots of good ones, some not so good ones. Do your research, talk to somebody about this. But we do recommend, rec uh, this will be bonus points in the challenge, taking a fish oil every day. Uh, some other ones to look at, maybe some joint care, probiotics, vitamin D, and a good protein powder for post-workout. That's an opportunity. Uh, plan of action. So we always say, and we'll get into the meal plans and all that stuff here in a minute, um, cook for an army, eat real foods, make sure every meal contains some carbs, fats, and lean protein, keep healthy snacks on hand, clean out the cupboards of all your bad food. If it's there, I'm going to eat it. That's how I am, so I make sure it's just not in the house. That way it's not even a temptation. Um, we'll have a Facebook page. You've probably already been on the Best Shape Your Life Challenge. And, uh, of course, this this e, uh, the ebook that you have the payload handout there okay uh, stress so let's basically let's get we're jumping into sleep here now so let's talk about a modern day stress response as opposed to we're gonna go back to this kind of paleo idea so back then food was this real food that we would eat all the time lean meats nuts and seeds fruits and vegetables so on and so forth we also have a dramatically different <coughs> uh, stress response okay and we'll jump down here real quick paleo day stress response Basically, it came down to fight or flight. You would have a, a, a moment of extreme stress, either being hunted or hunting, followed by times of relatively low stress. So cortisol levels and the stress response was mitigated and used for what it was needed to be. Now let's go to a modern day stress response. You know, This may just be a typical day for some people or not, but alarm clock wakes up, maybe you didn't get enough sleep that night, you gotta drive to work, there's traffic, you got stress at work, you gotta commute home, there's bills, there's mortgage, there's retirement, there's the kids, all sorts of things where we can chronically be stressing all day. I, I'm, I'm a culprit of this myself, so helping to manage that, though it's not gonna be easy to take away all the stress through your day, the best thing you can do is manage it. Low inflammation diet, eating the paleo diet and getting effective sleep. We know that chronic levels of stress increase cortisol and add that with lack of sleep can create all sorts of health complications. So sleeping for fitness, the reason we don't want too much cortisol in our body, it puts the brakes on our immune function. It can increase sodium in the blood which increases blood volume and blood pressure. It can weaken connective tissue and releases glucose and fatty acids from the liver and blunts insulin sensitivity. So this is another part of the challenge we'll be tracking, sleeping for fitness. So the goal is to go to bed when it's dark, all right, and that can kind of change here in the wintertime and, you know, in, in the Midwest, um, but we want to try to focus on that, maybe an hour after it gets dark or so, depending on, on when it's starting to get dark. Uh, the goal is at least seven hours of sleep, preferably eight to nine. Now, whenever I've done my big seminars and lectures, people laugh at this, so a lot of people laugh at this when I say that, and they're like, man, I'm lucky to get three or four. And I get it, I've been there too, but this is, if this is going to be one of the bigger parts of the challenge, I really want you to try it. It's significant. 
not just how you feel every day, but your long-term health is absolutely significant. So we'll talk about some more strategies as we pump out more content during the challenge. Um, and within the ebook, there's a lot of other strategies in there as well. But this is a huge component here. Uh, some tips on this, completely black out your room, keep it cool. Uh, no, kind of just do the, the, the math, right? If I know I'm up at, at 7 a.m., I got to be in bed by 11 p.m. And even if just getting in bed can really help. Even if I'm not tired at 11, well, let me start the practice of being in bed for eight hours. Um, so this is really important, really huge part of this whole challenge. Moving for fitness. So like I said, I'm a CrossFit guy, and this is the CrossFit definition of, of what is CrossFit. Okay, And now that can be mean anything. You don't have to be a CrossFit. You don't have to be a CrossFit gym. All the workouts we give you throughout the six weeks can be done anywhere. Um, but the philosophy behind this type of training, I think, is 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 just spot on. Okay, so we're gonna we in CrossFit we say it's constantly varied functional movements executed at a high intensity. Okay, and what we mean by high intensity is I I want you to be uncomfortable. Forty five minutes at a slow pace on elliptical is not uncomfortable. Sprinting, ten to fifteen seconds and then resting, ten to fifteen seconds. Do that ten times. That's really uncomfortable. That's hard to do. And that is why a lot of people don't get into this stuff initially, is because it is hard. But hard is good in this re in this regard. Okay, so we want high intensity. We want functional movements. A functional movement is something that's applicable to real life. It's safe, efficient, gives a massive neuroendocrine response, and there are multi-joint compound movements. So in the top right corner, you have a guy doing a front squat, a back high bar back squat, and a low bar back squat. So squatting is it's just a quintessential form of a, of a functional movement absolutely vital helps you pick things up off the ground good for knee lower back hip health it's so natural watch it you know watch a toddler bend down and pick something up it's just ingrained within our DNA as we grow older we have chairs and we get away from it completely so it's just one example of, of uh, anytime you get it from a seated position you're squatting okay so it's important that we learn to do this well and deadlifting would be another one just picking a load up off the floor safely okay so these are functional movements they, they apply to real life a tricep extension would be a not functional movement. Just having my hand over my head and doing this doesn't have any real world analog. It's just something to make a bigger tricep. So it's something that we would not be working on. And then variance, being constantly varied. It avoids accommodation. Doing the same routine over and over again, your body gets used to it and stops adapting. So we're going to pull from three main categories. Gymnastics, and that's easily summed up as just body weight movements. Weightlifting, anything with a load a squat with a barbell, a deadlift with a barbell, a kettlebell, etc. And then what's commonly referred to as cardio, running, rowing, swimming, jumping rope, etc. And that's what you'll see in the workouts. You'll see a variance of different types of movements in different types of domains. Okay? Yeah. Alright, that's that. Now what I want to pull up is the ebook. So hopefully you've had this. If not, you go to www.thebestshapeofyourlifechallenge.com. It is not where you registered for the challenge. There's two websites, thebestshapeofyourlifechallenge.com and bsoylc.com. The challenge is run off of bsoylc.com. You'll get the ebook from thebestshapeofyourlifechallenge.com. I know it's a little confusing, but um, that's the way it is right now. So I'm not going to belabor this. This is something I want everybody to read through. But this starts off by just kind of covering a lot of things that I just talked about. Um, eat, sleep, think, move, our health paradigm. Coming through here, it's much more, this is much more of a step-by-step -step guide on how to approach this. So I just talked about the paleo diet, and you're still going, what, what the heck do I do about this? Well, this is where you're going to go to that, right? Getting started with the paleo nutrition challenge. Why should you do the challenge? What is paleo eating? Eat real food. Here's some examples of it. Here's what to avoid, grains, legumes, dairies, processed foods. How much am I allowed to eat? How often should I eat? Uh, again, I like this. This is not a diet. Um, don't fear the fat and don't need to count calories. Okay, And that's why a lot of people have success with this. Where do you begin? Just keep reading through this and you'll have all these answers for you. Recipes online. We have some good resources to pull recipes off online. Here's some better examples of how to stock your pantry, seasoning and condiments and fats and vegetables and proteins. 
food quality. Again, you're going to get into it's better to find a local farm than a, than a supermarket, but it does, if you just that doesn't mean that's the only way. You're still better off eating a paleo if all you can do is go to the supermarket. That's fine. It's just always trying to make the better option, the better choice is ideal. And we even have some beginning paleo meal ideas. Okay, so here's some simple breakfasts, some easy lunches, dinners you already know how to make, and some more in depth. So roasted sweet potatoes, sweet potato hash, that's a good one. Frittata, a green smoothie, spaghetti squash with meat sauce, uh, paleo pasta sauce with meat, stir fry, lots of different recipes. So that's going to cover your food. I kind of I know I flew through that, but you should have all this. And of course, every week you'll get an email that will have um, your shopping list for the week and your meal plan. So I wanted this to be completely. To, if you're like, I don't have any idea how to cook for this, that's perfect because we're going to give you all you need to do. You just take the shopping list in the grocery store, buy everything, and then look at the list. Monday morning, I'm eating this, eating this, eating this, and then as you get into a couple weeks, you may find what you like, don't like, and uh, start making your own plan. So, sleep, here we go. Just more information on it. Here's some step by step stuff. Black out the room, keep it cool, read before bed, turn off TV at least an hour before bed, make it a habit, create a routine. Okay, um, very very important. Again, I know not easy for a lot of people. But very important. Move. We say move. Move is exercise. Okay, so just make it that. You know, think about it that way. Here are the 18 workouts that you're going to receive via video. Okay, so if you go to, and I hope this works. Just to get an example, this is what you would see. This is like a workout video. You only have access to the first so we're three walk videos. You, through workout one. you only have access to the first three videos through this. But again, every week you'll get emailed that week's three videos. If you're currently training at a gym already and you have a pretty solid workout routine, you're getting five days in a week of activity, then go ahead and stick to that. If you're not doing anything, you're looking for some help, this is what you're going to be doing. Okay? And even if you're reading through this and you go, I don't know what in the world he's talking about and some of this, that's fine. It's all explained in the videos. Okay? Go down through here. Glossary for you. Ah, uh, think. All right. <clears throat> so though this is not something that you'll track every day in the challenge, it's absolutely important. Thoughts dictate feelings. Feelings dictate actions, and actions dictate dictate results. So if we don't like our results, we must first begin with our thoughts. All right. And there's some training stuff that's going to come out on this, but here's an example of what we like to use. It's called cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, and it's just big fancy word for just saying that taking an excuse that stopped us from doing what we want and replacing it with something that would help us get to where we want. So something I hear all, all the time, I'm too tired to work out today. Instead of telling yourself that, replace it with something exercise gives me energy. It's just creating a opposite to what stops us. That's really all it is. It's very simple. And I encourage and coach a lot of people to just create journals. And let's say they're coming home from work and they're supposed to go to the gym and they don't. What's the first thing that came to your mind? Okay, don't judge it. Don't get beat yourself up about it. What's the first thing that came to your mind? Well, I'm too tired. I'm not going to be that good at it. What's the point anyway? Figure out what it is that this excuse is, this limiting belief and thought is, and try to come up with an opposite to it. And write that down. Figure out what the replacement's going to be and continually write it down. And so when you start having these thoughts or that thing that's not going to take you to the gym, you can you can tap into the replacement uh, the replacement thought okay but first step is awareness you have to know what your what's what your self limiting thoughts are so go ahead and read through this this help give you some really good ideas and here's what's going to help it out all right so this is our initial getting started uh, questionnaire eat sleep think move and this is like a big bullseye the goal then is to come down here and you're going to answer each one of these questions. I work at least four days per week, yes or no. I actively stretch and mobilize four days per week, yes, no, so on and so forth. So you'll go through here, yes, no, and add up your total points. So once I finish the move section, I'd come up here, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say I got seven, I'd make a line right there. And then I would do that for the other categories. And then I would connect all those lines. Now, obviously, in a perfect world, we have this nice, big, perfect circle. And I don't know anybody that's ever started off with that. Uh, you may, but I doubt it. We can all improve somewhere. So 
fill that out and that'll kind of give you how round is your wheel and then how big is your wheel that's kind of what we're looking at we want it to be big and round to to put it very simply and it'll help give you ask you some questions that maybe you haven't thought about okay so you have your move your eat your sleep and your think alright so do this before you start the challenge and then here's some other questions to really help get you focused what are the biggest deficiencies you notice in your eating habits what are some food triggers what can you implement today that make your eating better uh, how do you plan to manage strong cravings when they arise okay lots of different ways to help figure this out and a good thing to do is to take this then into whoever's coaching you or who you're working with and go over that with them maybe after you do this okay here's some more just con continuing on with this workbook it's a really great ex really great tool to get get you through all this all right and this jumps into what I'm going through next okay so this is just kind of week by week breakdown so read through your workbook very helpful all right so now let's go here you all have been here because you've all registered if you're seeing this hopefully this is the main page you'll log in up here I've already logged in now home eat sleep think move about is normal you that's something you'll see even if you don't have have a membership with us what you're buying is this tab right here called health information so once this is all live on Monday morning you'll be able to see a user profile okay and tracking sheet so here's the meat and potatoes every night now this says Friday because I'm shooting this video on Friday before the challenge this will say Monday on this coming Monday I list how I log my score so Monday evening I'll say Friday evening I'll go in here and say okay how many paleo meals did I have no, I had all three of them I had a good day the goal is not just to eat paleo meals but eat three meals and two snacks so we avoid getting too hungry for cravings and we're keeping our metabolism constant so let's say I did that one means yes zero means no I did that perfect did I get 64 ounces of water today uh, yes track my score cheat meal cheat meals any non paleo meal did I have processed foods refined sugars dairy legumes and grains uh, let's say no I didn't have one uh, but let's did I have any sugar soda candy etc we're talking about any sugary substance candy bar or soda that you know is not within this plan let's say you know I had a I don't know a soda or something for lunch and then alcohol Right, minus one for any alcoholic drink. That's a 12 ounce beer, six ounce glass of wine, or a shot, one ounce of liquor. Let's say I had a beer when I came home. That's negative points. Here's our bonus points. Did I take my fish oil? Yep, good. Did I take a good multivitamin? Yep. And did my meals contain grass-fed local meat? Let's say just a, you know, just one of them did. So that's how I'd log my day for eat. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is come up here to sleep. Did I get eight hours of sleep last night? Yes. Good. Now I only logged this one. It's only one I have to do here. You have a bonus point down here if you get six days in a row of eight plus hours of sleep. Now move, and a little trickier here, all you're doing is logging this once per week. So the best score is six plus workouts per week. Okay, and that doesn't have to be intense, crazy, hard workouts. Okay, you may do five or four or five really tough ones. And then your sixth workout is you're going to row for 2,000 meters at an easy pace or ride a bike or jump on the elliptical. It's that, you know, one of those per week is fine. I just want you physically active six days per week. And again, that depends. You know, if you haven't worked out in years and you're a little overweight, maybe you had some joint issues, getting out and walking a couple blocks may be a workout for you. Okay, if you're an advanced athlete, then maybe doing some you have six hardcore workouts is what's going to justify it for you. All right, but that's again that's scored once weekly, and then I'll come down here to subtract points is if I get no workout one or two, and then a bonus point. And this is going to suck for us in, in the Midwest right now, uh, especially we're getting about six inches of snow Monday morning. But one workout outside. Okay, the idea is to get some sun and get outside. So if you can get that done, great. If not, it's understandable in this weather, but that'll be a bonus point for you. And then down here, I'll have my total weekly score. Okay, once I have this all filled in, I'll have my total weekly score. And that will log. And your goal starting off with this is just to beat your score every week. Just do a little bit better next week, 
or this commit that needed last week. All right. So that's our tracking system. Then here is something really cool. So week one. Now your initial assessment can be as much or as little as you want. I will click on Add Edit, and here's what I have. My BMI, body fat, pulse, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, glucose, triglycerides, cholesterol ratio, and the Y, the workout of the day, or just a 500 meter row. BMI, body fat, pulse, blood pressure, and the row are not that difficult to get done. You can go to any local pharmacy and get your BMI, body fat, pulse, um, um, blood pressure done. Any local gym should have a rower. Just go in, set it for 500 meters, and get your max distance on there, or your max time. And then your glucose, triglycerides, and cholesterol ratio are done via lab work. Now, if you are in Fort Wayne, we got you covered. You'll come see us. We'll get you the, the lab vouchers. Um, speak to your respective uh, gym owners or chiropractors in your area that have hooked you up with this and see if they have a local relationship with the lab or your insurance may just cover it. You can go to local lab and get a Chem 17 blood draw. Okay. You'll input all of this data Okay, on week one. So I'm just going to throw in some numbers here. Um, let's see, 65, 120 over 80. And if you don't have access to lab work, we will give you standard numbers in your first week's email to input. And they're just the averages, so the lab isn't going to affect you one way or the other. It would just be more accurate if you could. Okay, so let's just go here, here. And let's say, and this is in seconds, so let's say I wrote, you know, a minute and 40 seconds. That would be 100 seconds. So I hit submit, let it do its thing, it'll process it. And again, this is week one or before week one. As soon as you can get this done, you'll get it in there. Go to final results and this is what's cool. So this is my current health status. Well, I'm in the 55th percentile in comparison to the average American. All right? And here's my before and after. So in after week 6, I am going to this the goal is to be improved. Even if it's a couple percent, the goal is to improve this dial, okay? And that's kind of, that's the main goal. So you'll see here what my percentages are. I have very good, you know, body fat here, pulse. These are just numbers I chose. These aren't exact, but and then I have your little indicator right here: sick, well, or fit. All right. So that is the main part of what you what you have got doing the challenge: the tracking sheet, which is absolutely vital for accountability. Accountability is absolutely everything, and body statistics allow us to show you real time progress. So we're not just saying. You know, you lost three pounds. Great, but what else? How else can we monitor and measure improvement? Okay. So that's the website. The last thing I'm going to show you is, if I can find it here, is go through real quick your week one emails. Okay, that's not it. So the weekly emails will come out, and what we may do, if there's any issues with people getting these or um, people wanting a little more time to go shopping, what we can do is um, send them all out a little bit sooner. Okay, so so here's what it's going to look like. Email number one will look just like this. You'll have a little bit of information on the top end. Your three workouts. Here's a tutorial to go through the tracking system. So if I went to that tracking system and you're still like, what in the world are you talking about? You can go back to this link and you can watch as many times as you need to understand it. All right. If you don't have lab work, these, these are the the baselines you're going to put in. This will give you a 50% in all three of them. So not bad or not not ter uh, too good. Shopping list looks just like this. Okay, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, extras. All right. Then meal plan right here. So day one, Monday morning, eggs, two strips of bacon, a small apple. Done. I'll have made my sweet potato hash, hopefully already and that'll be what I take for um, I'm sorry that's my breakfast for day two let's stay on this line breakfast would be this snack one would be a green smoothie lunch tuna lettuce wraps bell pepper avocado celery with almond butter roasted spaghetti uh, squash with meat sauce and vegetables so you'll walk right through that that has everything you'll need to know and what's even cool about this is you can click on open hyperlink you know, 
it's not going to work for me in this format. The fam format you have should work just fine. But basically, it'll take you to our website. It'll take you to this, and you'll be able to go to uh, our blog, essentially. So you'll see our blog right here. So here's the, for instance, here's the green smoothie recipe. Okay, so if there's no recipe ingrained in this, um, the hyperlink will take you to that recipe. Okay, or if it doesn't, the best bet is just to come right here. You'll see stir fry, beef roast, green smoothie, meatballs the roasted spaghetti, so on and so forth. Okay, And we'll continue to put out more blog posts in the areas of eat, sleep, think, move. If you have a specific question or th something you want addressed, uh, go to our Facebook page, ask the question, we'll get to it. Um, or just send us an, in an email at info at bsoylc.com and we will get to it. All right, that should handle most of what the questions I have received so far and definitely get you started. The first week will be a little choppy, okay? Especially not used to this kind of eating. Stick it out. Don't give up on it. Get the best score you possibly can and then just try to beat it the next week. You will get into this groove and most people realize it's not that hard to stick to long term. Okay? Thanks for taking part in this, guys. Again, any questions, let us know. We're here for your uh, support in any way. Start with your gym owners, your chiropractors. Talk to them. If they can't answer, if there's an administrative or technical issue, email us, and we'll get that squared away. All right. Good luck, everybody.